about to go to a thrift store, or stores, plural, to try and find some type of container for water. Hopefully either a either a cup or some decorative feature that someone <laughs> would put on their mantle. We're gonna instead try and put on a processor for a computer. Okay. And I don't know how well it's gonna go. So we were just about to walk out with this little piece of crap aluminum tray. And I knew this wasn't gonna work well, but it's basically the best thing I was able to find until I came across this little copper cup. And I don't know why these exist for a normal person to just have, but it's exactly what I'm looking for. And I know it's actually copper because it was $6 at a thrift store. And it's actually made by Coppercraft Guild in Zonton, Massachusetts. So thank you for making this product. This is, I think, going to be exactly what we're looking for for this video. For this computer, we're going to use one of my extra cheapy CPUs, an AMD Phenom 2 X6. It's a hex core processor, runs pretty hot, got six cores, so it should be a good test for this. I only have one extra AMD motherboard. It's kind of a cheapy Gigabyte 78 Allen, blah, blah, blah. It's an AM3 Plus pro, uh, motherboard. You can get them for really cheap at Micro Center. You usually have a ton of them extra in stock. Uh, I don't need a CPU cooler because that's what our experiment's going to be about. We're going to grab, probably just use an OEM power supply, which I already have in this crappy case. So we'll probably use this case. Do it to over here. Chuck this to the side for now. I feel like I'm forgetting something but I don't think I am. We don't have a graphics card because we are going to try and eliminate as much heat out of the computer as possible. So we're not gonna have a graphics card in here, plus I don't want to risk breaking one of my graphics cards in case something bad happens. Yeah, that should sit on there perfectly. So we got our $6 water cooler, do-it-yourself water cooling kit, right here and right here. So I hate installing and there it goes, nice and smooth right in there. Lock it into place. Realistically, for this build, I don't really need both of these, but you might as well since we have them. Alright, so RAM is installed. Two screws is probably enough. Ah, uh, no. We're doing enough wrong in this video. I should do some things right, I guess. We'll make sure it's installed properly. This is also the greatest cable management you've ever seen, I'm sure. And there we go. We got a beautiful computer without a CPU cooler. Because that's what this beautiful copper cup is going to be for. Alright. So one thing... One thing I'm concerned about this is that with normal CPU coolers, you have a bracket to hold it down to apply force to it, which will then help the connection between the CPU and the cooler. However, we don't really have a way to brace this down. So I don't know how to do that. I think if we just honestly just drop it on there, that's gonna, ha that's gonna be how it's gonna have to work. Oh, the tricky part with this whole thing. My biggest concern with this was going to be the cup that we're using sweating, or basically the water condensating on it. And so we're going to have to do something that's a little extra than you normally would. But we're going to have to basically make sure that the water temperature that we put in here is going to be warmer than the dew point temperature of the environment that we're in. Now, thankfully, that's pretty easy for me because I have weather experience and I have the technology to measure such a thing. So I'm going to go grab one of those and then we're going to measure the dew point temperature and that's what we're going to have to use to make sure that our water temperature is warmer than that. Dew point temperature is in the upper 50s so really I shouldn't have to worry too much about it being the water being too cold and this starting to sweat. So I got a warm cup of water here. 
And so we got a little bit of that. We're gonna mix a little bit of colder water in there too. So here is our beautiful water cooler. Put a little bit of thermal paste down there. And we'll just kinda just drop it on there, I guess. Give it a little bit of force to try and spread some of that thermal paste out. I have absolutely no idea if that's covering all the cores or not. So we'll put this on. Yay, windows. Okay. Good deal. So it's booting. It's functioning. I'm telling you, the, the cathode lighting in here is giving that extra 15% boost in performance. Does that look super cool? You can see here the temperature of the CPU is running about 49 degrees. Not bad. That's pretty good. All right, we'll open up Prime 95. This is going to be our our uh, benchmarking software here. So this will this program will run your processor at 100% on all cores. Really taking off right now. Ah, 73. Good, good. 74, 75, 76. So clearly this is not a really good solution for your processor. All right, 77, oh, we're down to 76. I can see like bubbles forming on the bottom of the water. So it's getting really nice and toasty down there. I was trying to get it to at least hold out for 10 minutes, and I don't know if I'm even going to get that. Up to 87. Hmm. 88. When it gets to 95, I think I'm going to turn this down. Because <laughs> processors can run pretty hot, usually. But running at 90 degrees isn't usually good. A little five minutes in, we're up to 92 degrees now. To 94, 93 degrees, it actually cooled off a little bit. It was at 95, peaked at 95 very briefly, but down to 93, 94. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to call this pretty soon here. Maybe, okay, let's do this. This is probably really dumb. Maybe if we stir the water a little bit. If we get the water flowing. And then maybe get some of the hot, yeah, see it's down 93, so down to 92. So maybe we just gotta, we kinda just gotta get the water going here. So you can't just sit in game with it. You have to, yeah, we're down to 90 now. So, so that's, that's how we're gonna have to do it. So basically, Oh, it's warm. <laughs> it's it's pretty warm. So this is why water coolers work. Fun fact is that water coolers work because obviously there's a pump and the water is flowing and normally that water gets taken to a radiator where it's taken and like cooled off and then it flows back to the CPU through the cup back to the radiator. So the water is constantly flowing, so it doesn't really get a chance to get very warm. But this instance, we aren't really getting any flow at all, so we kind of have to just mix the water a little bit. You know, I wonder if I was doing this from the beginning, if it would be not as stupid. Is it practical? Not at all. Not at all practical. If, you know, your, C if your CPU cooler breaks and you have to game, uh, you're just going to have to sit here with a stirrer and just constantly stir it. My goal is to hit 10 minutes without this overheating. And we're at over 10 minutes now. So mission, <laughs> mission accomplished. As soon as I start mixing the water, the temperatures begin to go down. And they'll go down at a pretty good clip. But the water itself is already super warm right now. The heat sink of the water is not effective. Trying to stir this as much as possible. 
But as soon as I stop, so I just stopped, you'll see your temperatures bottom out, so 89, and then your temperatures are going to start shooting up again. Okay. Stop the tests. And so you're going to see your percentages here, they're going to all drop back down to idle state. And theoretically, now our temperatures should start going down as well. Look at that, oh, now, it's, now it's tanking, so... <laughs> we got pretty close there to boiling. If you want to kind of look at this, if you look in there, you can see all the bubbles down there, and then the water came pretty close to a bubbling state. Let me stir this a little bit more. We did break the computer. It's functioning. And keep in mind, this is kind of an extreme case with all six cores running at max. So it is the worst case scenario for your CPU, and we proved it is possible to cool your CPU with a cup of water. Uh, it's just not effective, and it, it would start boiling pretty quick. I mean, we, we're, we stopped everything. We're down to 0%, and the temperature is still at 76 degrees. We, we can't even really get the water temperature down any. And I'm just curious if the cup worked the way it was supposed to. Because I chose copper because it's a very good conductor. And I was hoping that it would... Oh yeah, that's hot. Yeah, so it, the copper cup worked well to disperse the heat. The problem was there was no way to cool the copper cup in return. We're going to let it cool off and then we're going to attach a fan somewhere near this to try and keep the cup colder and maybe that'll help a little bit. I want this to cool off faster and the only way, I don't want to remove it and have to reapply the thermal paste, so I'm just going to have to drink the hot water out of this and put in cold water. So don't, don't try this out. So don't mm. Mm. That is nasty. I feel like less spilling will happen if I use a measuring cup. Okay. A little bit more. See, this water is cold. If I left some of the super hot water in there, so it should mix out pretty well. So we're going to stir this all up. Hopefully this doesn't start sweating, because that'll be a problem. Oh, it's cold. That's a problem. Shit. Don't do anything you're seeing ever. This is just the worst thing I've ever done. It is unplugged, okay? At least I'm taking some safety precautions with this. <laughs> In order to cool this off a little bit better, I'm just going to put a fan right on top of the cup this time. And that should be fine. He's just enjoying the show. He's got a bag of chips, just enjoying the show. We're running at about 42 degrees. We're at idle. You see all the percentages here are at 0%. We're down to 39, actually, so I'm getting really concerned this is going to start condensating on the side of the cup. So we're going to start our stress test. Reset. And go. Okay, so timer's on. You're going to start seeing your, your CPU percentage, so your usage for your CPU is now maxed out at 100%. Temperatures are already up to 62 degrees. Temperatures are rising very, very fast, like it did last time. So the goal is, again, to get this to last 10 minutes and not at 97 degrees. And this, again, this is 97 degrees Celsius. So we're at 3 minutes, and we're still only at 66 degrees. And so I'm going to do real quick... Take this off and stir it a little bit. Stir the water a little bit. Let's place the back on there. We're down to 62 again, so stirring the water will help because it removes, it takes the, the hot water out of the base and mixes it up with the rest of the cup. Six minutes in, we're still at 71. Stir it up a little bit. Gaming wise, this would be very impractical, because you're going to have to sit here, play, and then you have to stir the water, and then go back to playing and stir the water. So if you're playing like a, like a shooter, every time you die, you know, stir it. Uh, if you're video editing, uh, I guess when you're rendering it out, I mean, you got nothing else to do except stir the water, so yeah, you're fine with that. 
Um, photo editing, that'll be an annoying thing to accomplish, I would say. Okay, we're able to get it down to 80. So 80 degrees at 22 minutes, that's not too bad. So let's stop our, all right, let's stop our test bench here. See our load is gonna go down to zero percent. So with the fan involved, uh, we maxed out at only 89 degrees compared to the 97 degrees uh, last time. And we were able to keep it consistently below like 80, basically right around 80 degrees. I guess overall, if you didn't have any better options for a CPU cooler, and you were just left with a cup of water. It had to be, of course, of metal variety, preferably copper. I don't exactly know how we were able to find this copper cup. Pretty lucky, honestly. But if you, uh, you know, if your CPU cooler broke and you were in the need for some, um, for some uh, instant CPU cooling, I mean, I guess this would work pretty well. I mean, plus you can, you know, make some tea. When you're done, you got a nice cup of tea waiting for you. Some raspberry tea. So, uh, would I recommend this? Absolutely not. Don't be stupid. Don't ever try this. <laughs> so, the last thing I wanted to see is how well did this actually work at covering all the cores. You can see it didn't really work all that well. It was pretty centrally located, didn't really spread all that well, mainly because the uh, there wasn't enough pressure on the CPU so the 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 as you can see the thermal paste didn't spread as well as it could have because there just simply wasn't enough wasn't enough um, pressure on it but yeah it works pretty well and you got a tasty you know thing of tea at the end of the day Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. Make sure to subscribe for more videos. We've got more stuff coming real soon. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.